Helen, you gotta let me on the meeting. What do you mean? You can't get on the meeting. You gotta let me in that, into the room. So it's the hostess that has to let you on. I don't see your name, Rich. It showed that, so it might show micro but I'm not sure. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting for Northfield Center Township. The public was notified of the of this public and WebEx meeting by F Facebook, Twitter, Community Focus, and an email. Sunshine Law noticed the meeting notification list, information placed on the township website, and the electronic sign. Northfield Center Township Board of Trustees reopened the town hall June 2nd, 2021, and tends to file the Center for Disease Control guidelines for the town town hall. The access to the meeting was on their website. Chair sure calls the meeting to order at 7.04 p.m. Roll call, please. Paul Busher. He's not here. Matt, no, Matt. he's going to be absent. Russ Mazzola. Here. Rich Ravel. Here. Department head reports. We'll start. Up. What's it? We haven't done that. This oh, yeah, that's right. Listen, you're right. Good talk. Santa Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll start out with department head reports. Uh, we'll start with the sheriff's office, please. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Captain Joseph here. Um, the sheriff's office um, logged 500 uh, CAD entries for calls for service and self-initiated activity in the township in the month of May. Um, we realized there's been uh, some citizen complaints about um, noise and mini bikes and go-karts, uh, specifically um, in the Fairhaven, Crestwood um, area, um, Marwick, Pickwick, and Kenwick, as well as the um, Beacon Hill Park area. Um, we have stepped up patrols in those areas. Um, we had the radar trailer out on uh, Marwick from uh, May 18th to May 25th, and then on Honeydale from May 25th to June 3rd. Um, sergeant Walsh, um, our community policing sergeant, is currently, I believe as we speak, out hanging um, notices to begin a neighborhood watch in the Beacon Hill Park area. That would include residences <clears throat> on Beacon Hill, Sky Lane, Pleasant View, Honeydale, um, Brandywine from West Highland to the Beacon Hill, and then uh, West Highland Road from Brandywine to Old Eight. Um, the plan is to have the first meeting on Wednesday, June 9th at the town hall at 7 p.m. Uh, and 
that's it. Any questions? Yeah, we had some. We had that issue with the VFW hall. We had people pulling out of there after their shows. We sent them a letter to the VFW hall, but I guess a couple of neighbors, we've taken some complaints about it uh, where they were going out of there and they were speeding and racing down the street. Okay. You aware no, that's the first I've heard um, that. Is that uh, late at night specific or? Um, no, that Kevin Joseph to Russ Mazzola. So I, what, what I was told is that it's typically during like a, a car show or some sort of um, function that the VFW would hold. And so again, we, we sent them a letter just letting them know to let their uh, guests know, you know, to, to be friendly neighbors and to be cordial when you're leaving the parking lot, not to race down old eight. Um, but again, I guess it happened again this past weekend when there was a car show on Saturday. So. Okay, I'll let the, the uh, deputies know to uh, be on the lookout for events there and be in the area when they let out. Yeah, thank you. I was going to ask if you are aware of when they do have events. I don't know if that's made aware to you guys or if you guys keep it is not to me. No. Okay. Do you guys have that information? No, we don't. We don't get it. We don't get it directly from the VFW. We're just made aware of it through other, I guess third parties or whatever so okay just want to work together and make sure that the residents in that area are you know absolutely certainly with things, so thank yeah. you and the other the other comment we had was that issue over on uh crestwood yes uh, where you talked about with the vehicles we posted it our zoning inspector posted it because we were going through the process of it to, to file through to remove the vehicles. And uh, of course, the resident came up and told Judy and Don that uh, one of your officers told them that the, he was okay. And I know you and I talked about it. And you told me that, or maybe I talked to the officer that you no, know, he never said that issue. So that's still an ongoing issue. Um, you and I talked to the people in the neighborhood on that and uh, it's still an ongoing issue okay that are the vehicles and uh, the vehicles that you tagged were um were they in the front or the rear of the, of the residence combination of we didn't tag the vehicles themselves we tagged the house we put a okay. notice for her on the house itself but this has been a ongoing thing for 20 years, 15, 20 years. Okay. And we just, we need to bring this thing to a conclusion. And I know our zoning inspectors out of town this week, but we need to bring this thing to a conclusion. Yeah. I mean, it is a zoning issue, but we would be 100% on board with, uh, you know, getting with your zoning officials when they go out to speak to him. Mm -hmm. And also when, the whole process has gone through and you know we'd be more than happy to go out there with them when you know if towing the vehicles is necessary and stand by and assist with that okay when he, when he gets back in town we'll have helen or judy talk to our zoning inspector and make sure that yeah i understand uh, make sure that we're following through and we get communicate with that with you okay excellent i appreciate all the help anybody else have anything for Thank you. Thank you. Um, fire chief. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, the calls for May of this year, there were in Northfield Center specifically, there were 49 EMS runs, 16 fire runs. Um, <laughs> the biggest event for the month in Northfield Center was the garbage truck fire on May 20th. Closed the road for about four hours. Uh, was an issue for us because it's a compressed natural gas powered vehicle that was venting and burning. The vehicle was in fact a total loss, closed that west end of West Twinsburg Road, like I said, for four hours. Um, 
deputies were a great help had the road closed the county came out put road closed signs up and stuff like that so an engineer was out and also they were looking and checking to make sure the road wasn't damaged if they had to do any road repair there um we also had an mva i believe at five points that took down a pole and some wires um no one was injured but it did cause a little traffic jam um that was the sunday of memorial weekend um an interesting thing that's been happening is we keep getting calls for the county sewer pumping station located there in a crossings right on 82. Um, every time their generator fires, uh, they run it once a week for a test. It spews smoke out of the back of the building. It seems like there's always somebody in the area that calls. Um, we've contacted the county and asked them if they can look at the generator and make sure it's running properly so we don't get those you know, per se, they're not nuisance calls. People are doing what they believe is right. They think the building's on fire, but it's the generator not running properly, we believe, and they're supposed to be looking at that. Another interesting thing I found looking at the numbers today was we had seven injury accidents in the township in the month of May. Um, that seems like a lot. So um, I would just caution people, be careful when you drive. The weather is nice and be careful on the roadways. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know we had that accident on Twinsburg Road with the guy went through the fence again. Right. We seem to have an ongoing thing there. Now, the intent from the Summit County is to put a traffic light there this month. Right. Okay. And so hopefully that'll alleviate some of that problem. Then, of course, as you know, that Highland Road will be closed this month. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. And then I think Twinsburg Road, if I'm not mistaken, they're talking about paving Twinsburg Road too. At the same so, time? We don't know for sure. We're, we're looking at the, we got to find out all the details on it. Okay. So we'll let you know, we'll keep you informed, but it's, you know, it's going to create such a mess because everybody's got to either go down to 82 or go into Boston Heights or if they get across, go up Twinsburg Road to Valley View Road. So as I talked to a bunch of people, that's probably the way that they're going to go, but. Yeah, it's going to be a traffic problem, I'm sure. And the bridge is out for three months or something like that, correct? 90 days? No, it looks like about 120. Oh, okay. So it depends on the deck of the bridge. If the superstructure below the deck is good, then there'll be 90 days. If it's not good, then it'll be 120 for sure. Okay. Okay, just so you know. Yep, thank you. No problem. All right, service department. Do you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, how's everybody doing? Um, I got our power slide here up for the uh, month of May. I'm going to try and fly through this. Uh, utilities, we had due to storms and vehicles hitting lines. We've had lines that I had to call in for Shady Lane, Morningside, and Beacon Hill Park, which all have been corrected. There were two damaged hydrants that came into play they were repaired by the water department uh one near cvs on old eight and the other one down by brandywine falls uh, on brandywine road in regards to the service department equipment we had a recall repair on 529 first uh that was for the airbags and then uh, we serviced that truck and then 538 which is our uh, excavator. We had a hydraulic line uh, blowout while we were in use. Uh, we minimized the leak and we had to repair it on site. And uh, we had four hydraulic lines that were in bad shape. As far as uh, emergency fire equipment, the only issue we have is the secondary squad. It's got a siren control box that's apparently unrepairable and we're looking into a new one which i believe is on order or will be buildings and grounds maintenance service department we had an issue at uh the tarp on the salt shed was uh coming loose they didn't use any kind of washers on the bolts that were holding it in place so we modified and replaced them with large washers that should take care of it for its lifespan we also in the service yard removed uh, five truckloads of piled up concrete 
and did some yard tidying up. American security went to the town hall and safety building and replaced a bunch of detectors. Oops, sorry about that. And I did get with ODOT and address the issues and concerns for the fire department with the emergency zone on Route 82 for getting that painted. And there was also a no blocking exit sign that needs to be posted there too that they're aware of. So it's on their agenda. Miscellaneous, we put the flags up around the town. We did have an emergency call on the 29th out of the blue with no wind, no storm, but it was windy and raining earlier in the night with a large limb on Butternut Road. I had to go out and cut and remove that from the road. Road maintenance. Uh, we had an issue at 7720 with a contractor damaging a road edge with their excavator. A uh, letter was sent to address that issue, and that's something we're going to put on the agenda for repair. At 265 Skylane, uh, the sunken water repair patch from the water department was finally paved, so no longer an issue. We've completed all cold patching repairs, so from here forth, it'll be hot patching. Uh, we're waiting on Summit County Engineer's Office to get the cost estimates for the road surfacing plans uh, for the Wicks area, Rolling Brook Development, and Shelf Drive. Stormwater, regarding catch basins due to storms, we've had to clean off debris on catch basin tops on Marwick and Bayberry roads. Uh, once again, Summit County Engineer's Office was finishing off bid specs so we can get the contractor bids out for the 18 catch basins uh, we submitted for repair. We uh, did ditching uh, at 12 residents, uh, 11 of them being in the Oakmonts and then 103 Berry Lane. We did two sinkhole repairs, one at 7500 Fantail and at Charter Drive and Boy Court intersections. We finally got our culvert pipes, 411 and 57 limestone supplies delivered, so we'll be able to work on drive pipe replacements for the summer. Regarding parks and grounds, uh, we secured all the new lids that we bought for the stone trash cans. So they're secured by chain, so we won't have the wind blowing them away as happened earlier in April. Uh, Sharpscapes got everything mulched. The annuals were planted. Uh, they're keeping up with the mowing, and they did fertilize the required lawn areas, and I think they're doing a great job. Beacon Hill Park, uh, as everyone's seen, they, they got the courts sealed and striped. We planted uh, two river birch trees and edged, and then sharpscapes came in and they trimmed the burning bushes and they mulched the, the uh, shrub beds and the tree beds. The park, uh, if everyone has not been around there, you'll see there's been a lot of activity. Everyone's using it. Uh, we're getting lots of positive feedback on the park from the residents via phone call or just when we're there checking on it. They're very ecstatic about the use of the park. Uh, on the other note, from our popping in there for inspections or just doing things we got to do, we're finding trash around the playground. It's not making its way to the trash cans. We're finding food particles and food waste underneath the picnic tables, and we're finding the trash cans are filling up quickly. Other observed things, we're noticing rocks in a tennis court, which means kids are throwing them over the fence into there. Uh, we have video of older teenagers climbing on playground equipment. We're concerned about them getting hurt. Uh, we're also noting evidence of kids climbing over the four foot high fence on the short side of the tennis court. And that evidence is with the tops of the fence being bent down or bent over. Uh, I'm recommending we do Monday and Friday inspections of the parks. 
and we pursue a proactive approach to making parents aware of concerned behaviors of identified children via police or letters from identified footage from video. Uh, we're planning on installing the four Frank, foot high. Frank, let me interrupt. Yes. Let me interrupt. Um, the last footage we have with the kids bending the equipment over and climbing on top was sent over to the sheriff's office. Okay. With the uh, addresses of the kids that were doing it to the best of our ability. Um, I don't know if Captain Joseph, you still on or what? He may he may have taken off, but we'll we'll no, do I'm, I'm still here. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I did uh, get the I did get the information on the juveniles, but I did not receive any video. Oh, uh, it went with it, I thought, but I will double check it. We'll get you the video over for it. Okay. All right. Um, we'll make sure that uh, administrator gets it over to you, but. And you know, we should come up with a plan to address these with the parents, whether uh, the trustees. And the sheriff's office visit them or something to that nature. Because Frank's right, they were bending this equipment over the, the stuff that's designed for two and three year olds and four year olds. They had 15 year olds on there bending it in half. So we, we need to address this issue. I know it's not a high priority to yours, but um, we still need to make sure that we don't get any further into it. Sure. Okay, thank you again for the help. Go ahead, Frank. And uh, finally, uh, the four foot fence that we have, we're gonna install that on the back of the property here sometime this month. And if I understand, I don't have a date here, but we should be seeing the contractors there to install the net bases and seal off and stripe the uh, tennis court. Yeah, and the, uh, the NMI report. The Parks, Parks and Recreation Committee will have a you know, statement on that. Okay. Frank, what is going back to uh, Beacon Hills driveway with a contractor uh, destroyed, uh, you know, uh, ruined the end of the driveway or so forth. Was there was a actually, temporary? Go ahead. Was there a temporary patch put in there? Uh, what we did is we went over there. To, it's, it's probably a two foot chunk of the road edge, maybe a foot in. And basically what we did is we pulled that chunk out that was more in the, on the edge of the road versus in the road. And then we temporarily cold patch, but what we'll do here when we get some other things together, we'll get the hot patch. We'll cut that section out and put some actual solid asphalt in there. Okay, what have we done to the contractor? To I know we sent the letter out, but what is our follow through on that? That's all I know at this time until we establish a cost uh, for a repair. Okay, have we got any response from the contractor that did it, that did the damage? I do not know of that. That would be from Helen's side of it. Uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman, uh, we did not receive any response and the letter actually stated that we will be forwarding a bill, an invoice, once we know the exact cost. But we have okay, not this, received a response. Was this forward to the prosecutor's office at all? I will check on that. If it wasn't, I will forward one to Mr. Golonsky. Okay, I appreciate that. Okay, anything else, Frank? No, sir. Russ, any questions? No, thank okay. you. All right, moving on. We're uh, zoning inspector is out of town. His son got married. Uh, so, as far as zoning issues, Judy, you have anything on the zoning issues? No, we have uh, hearings coming up again this Thursday. We have two hearings coming up Thursday again for um, the vet clinic here at the intersection. Okay regarding setbacks for a new building, and also um, the possible barbecue stand that would be placed at Howard Chaffron's Plaza. The port the portable barbecue? Yeah. yeah, or whatever, it's not a truck, but it's a... She's indicating tents with some... Tents, people. okay. So those are two double uh, hearings on Thursday, mm -hmm. and then the 17th, again, the following Thursday, we have the chickens again, the continuance, the chickens on Beechwood, and also, we're they added uh, last last Thursday the third. One of the applicants did not show up for his hearing, uh, at Pocky International Kitchen. So they just continued that as a courtesy to him. On the seventeenth, we did call him. I haven't heard anything, so I don't know if he uh, is planning on 
continuing with that because uh, word on social media is that he bought the loose moose or he's renting mm -hmm. the loose moose. So maybe he didn't need it anymore, but he didn't give us any indication. Okay. And as far as the other developments and stuff like that, we have nothing going on right now because they're working with Summit County at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing. Um, Panda Express has Panda Express has um, submitted some applications. Right. But uh, nothing's going forward yet either on that. It's those are bigger mm -hmm. projects. Yeah, we Don forward me the information on. I don't report it to you or not. The information, the, the procedure that. Macedonia, what, what you know, new procedure. So, yeah. but this time, I don't know if it's a whole lot of difference than what we used to do. Chairman, we have, I hear you have very gentle voices. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I'll put move it as close as I can get. Ah. Mona here. Heard me. All right. So we're moving on. We we have that. Um, I don't think there's anything else in zoning except for small issues right now that are going on. Lots of regular permits, right. so, you know, just regular residential permits. Okay. We have the county engineer. Is Eugene on? He's not listed as a participant. Okay. All right. Then the next one is the township administrator. All right. Uh, first of all, the July meeting, we're going to have to move. It's July 5, a Monday, the first Monday, but that is a legal holiday for July 4th, which falls on a Sunday. So do you wish to uh, hold it or move it till Tuesday, July 6th? Our policy is we move it, if it's off of a holiday, we move it to the the day after the Tuesday. The following so, day, so, okay, so your next, Regular scheduled meeting will be Ju July 6th on a Tuesday at 7. Correct. Okay. Uh, one note on our website, we had something about the county uh, engineer sent a notice about uh, subdivision basin and detention basin inspections. Uh, I've updated the website. It, it's only for the Sky Haven subdivision this year uh, that will, they will be inspecting the detention basins. I filed the grants with NOPEC for an air conditioner for the town hall, and I filed with Community Development Block Grant a new roof, for new roof and gutters for the town hall, both which were approved by the Board of Trustees in earlier meetings. Uh, Wednesday, I'll be filing the Nature Works reimbursement for $114,035 to be reimbursed for Beacon Hills Park. And we should submit our final numbers for the UAN to the state auditor by June N. And that's all I have okay. for now. Oh, other than we are taking bookings for the town hall now that we're opened again and pavilion reservations as well. Okay. And Judy, Judy and I are maintaining a calendar and the book is in Judy's office out front. Now we have to post that at the, at the pavilion Every time it changes. So we're going to have to figure that procedure out. I think that's something that I think the park committee should come up with. I had asked uh, Frank, uh, well, probably was Rick. I had asked the service department about putting a frame up there on the pavilion, just like an eight and a half by 10 frame, and then with a glass, and we would insert who the pavilion's reserved for. It's already that, there, Helen. It is there. Oh, yeah, I did they, not know that. They put it up a while ago. It's a, the poster board where we'll put the rules for the park. And at the same time, that'll have the pavilion rental. It's right in front of the pavilion. Okay, so then that'll show who has the pavilion for that day. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank we'll you. We'll have to update that whether the, road, the service department comes up if there's a change when they come up and go by here and they can post it up in the park or we work out some other details, but we'll have to figure that out. Right, or I, I can run down or Judy and change it. Okay. All right. And that's all I have unless you have questions for me. Any questions? No questions. No, I think that's it. I, th I know you got a couple of things working, so we'll just keep working on those right now. 
Oh, UAN, that's the question. I apologize. UAN, what are we looking for to get the equipment time-wise? I, I, that was my final part of the report. I should have the numbers. They need the numbers, year-to-date numbers, whenever we send it. And I should have those in to them by the end of this month. Okay. I'll just pick June as a halfway mark. Then how long does it take to get the equipment after that point? Usually 90 days. But so that's after 24-hour, uh, uh, two full days of training for the fiscal officer before they send it. So we're still looking out to... November, October, November time. Sure. Yes, most definitely. My Good recommendation is to get them trained. We'll get them trained and get the equipment in and turn it over January 1 of 2022. That's what I think too. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Helen? No. Committee reports, communications. Do we have anybody for communications here? See nobody for communication, parks and recs. I have a microphone. <clears throat> Frank, can you hear Rick? Computer. Hello. He answered, he responded to you. Go say that again. You, <clears throat> I don't know if he can hear you. I'm so. So moving on. Talked to Sightech this morning and that's the company contract to refurbish or repaint line of the sport course and put an ending in. Um, tell me that within the next seven to ten days, doesn't matter if it's raining or not. Um, Frank, did you hear that? I could barely hear. I heard something about five to ten days coming in. The contrary to set the post, and that's that's. Are you on a meeting? No, on your phone. Are you on a meeting? That also. Just turn your volume off. Just turn your volume. You can talk through your phone, and everybody will hear you. No, turn it on, so you can talk right through your 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 phone, and everybody will hear you. Hey, Frank. Yes, sir. We have a video of those kids jumping over the fence. Okay. Do we have a video of the kids jumping over the fence? Have you checked the video? I am yet? not aware of any video of that because the problem you have here is unless we have someone that has a time frame, you got to watch it all. <laughs> and seven days worth of videos, a lot of video. Okay. All right. The break that I said was that the sports board company should be here within the next seven to ten days. To start the preliminary work of putting the footers in for the pickleball and for the tennis. Uh, and as soon as the weather's conducive for painting the court, they'll do that. But <coughs> indicated that they'll be done by the end of June or the course will be up and ready to run. Have you heard all that, Frank? I did hear that. Okay, let's move on. Uh, talk to Kate Chapman today. Um, and she is the uh, project senior project manager for the Tinkers Creek Watershed Authority. Um, and they have got the contractors lined up uh, for our interviewing. I'm not quite sure what this is. It's probably to get a scope of what we want done. And we're going to this is And that should happen within the next couple of weeks. So that's, that's a great move. <laughs> 
Just for the record, Richard Rodell and I met with Chad Wood on the public transportation. Um, I think the first week of May put out a PowerPoint presentation of, of what the issues are with Brandywine Creek, Indian Creek, uh, the property going, the jet properties, and stormwater issues in the Kit area. And we gave him a flash drive with that PowerPoint presentation on the back to his office. To review it with his engineers and see if they could come up with a solution. The idea was this may be where the pipe goes from Kitner in the Indian Creek. Slightly no more than that trunk. Just let me interrupt one second there. <laughs> he did not get the flash drive. We've tried to meet, we haven't been able to meet up with him yet because he's been jammed. But what he did tell me is that he walked the property, he walked through the ditch, he could get through the one side, but he couldn't get through the other side. So he's going to go back and do it, but he also his engineer is going to go through and walk through it too. Okay, and as was as of last week when I talked to him. I'm going to jump here a little bit. As far as I believe in Hill Park goes and the equipment work issues we had, I've got a letter put together and I'm going to connect Dr. Heather Olson of the Northern Iowa University of Northern Iowa. She's the executive director of the playground safety and university capital university. So we have to get together to see if they can come up with a solution for the problems they have. Or something to address it. Lastly, and I, I don't have all the information on this, but I think you're right. Rich, uh, Ellen, you guys think you can fill in on this, but I believe that there's some action by Southern County Council or Southern. That is in the council level. Um, there's going to be a stormwater bill that's going to implement it. So I don't know what you guys know about it, but I'd like to Helen, you uh, brought that information up. Do you have a little bit more information about that? I know what I read about. Uh, yes, yes, sir, I do. Uh, the uh, MS4 permits have always been under the county engineer for all 31 entities in Summit County, cities, villages, and townships. The Ohio EPA and uh, the US EPA and the Ohio EPA respectively are stating that we must file our own, townships are required, each entity must file their own. Uh, the county engineer has put together a program where they will officially represent us through the EPA uh, like they have in the past, just the nine townships and offering it to cities and villages who wish to continue to participate. And, but the uh, proviso of that is that they would have to join the stormwater district, the Summit County stormwater district, which has been organized with the county council. And the only one that is a, a member of it currently is one township in Summit County. Uh, so that's the whole issue. I talked with the uh, president of the Township Association of Summit County today to see, uh, I do know some of the townships are reluctant to join the stormwater district. So I'm not sure where we're at right now with this. Uh, it seems to be an impasse. Uh, I'm going to contact David White with the Summit County engineer tomorrow and to see how many townships have uh, indicated they're willing to join, how many cities and villages or do we go out on our own? I'm I'm not sure, but that's where we're at at this point. Okay, go ahead, Rick. Yeah. Okay. We worked with the Southern County Engineer's Office. We were very fortunate to get Tigger's uh, Creek Watershed people on board with us to work with. Area to look at it. And of course, the United Way Perception funds from the Northeast Ohio Sewer District. Yeah, we are. We're getting funds to Northset, right? Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. We got a $4,000 grant, I think it was. So, would it behoove us, or would you care to have the Stormwater Committee look at our options here? Are 
Well, the, you, you would have to look at both of them, but we don't know if Northstead will file our MS4s or not. If they don't file our MS4s, that's the whole reason to join Summit Counties because this paperwork gets done. And that's their output reports, output reports that they give that you have to put for every one of your outputs inside the communities. So if, they, if Northstead doesn't do it, then you're kind of stuck there with Summit County if you want to get it done. That lose or? Okay, we have to do a report every year on our outputs <laughs> the water outputs where they come out and we have, I don't know how many there is quite a few in, in, in the area. And there's a report that you have to turn into the EPA. What would happen is Summit County. And again, this is to the best of my ability. I don't take this for gospel would go and they would do these reports. They would go do the testing and reports and turn that information in. But it looks like they're holding a caveat over. I had to say that we have to join their Summit County stormwater program. So we're in a little bit of a catch 22 there. So we have to find a little bit more information. Okay. It's a little confusing, but unfortunately, that's the way the, the EPA requires it. So my question. What we need a stormwater committee to do, and this is my opinion, Russell can make his opinion, Paul can make his, but I would think that what we would need you to do is we get both programs together and we can see what each one will do. Then we can make a decision based on cause factors and the benefits to the community. That's what I like the stormwater committee to do. I would think that's a pretty reasonable approach. <laughs> Verbatim. <laughs> no problem. Anything else from stormwater? Okay, I don't know if we have anybody from safety services. We kind of skipped over them. Do we have Gene or Joe on the phone or anybody? Okay. All right, what we'll do is we'll open the floor to public comments. Comments will be limited to township residents and must relate to the items included on this agenda and be limited to five minutes, less than five minutes. Do we have any uh, questions? Hey, Chair? Yes. I'm assuming we can't hear you. We can't hear you. We get your microphone. We'll put the microphone over them. <clears throat> yeah, you want to identify your you yourself and your street, your address? Identify yourself and your address. Sure. Assuming that Mr. Bell is not participating, Mr. Bush here? He is not. He is not here. Thanks, Mr. Bell is not here. Correct. Well, it's so hard for everybody to hear. So that's the reason why. Because <laughs> you got people on here on the phone. No. People on the phone can't always hear. Seventeen, 
in the minutes of the meeting, May 17, 2021, there is the item number two, the chair request resolution 21517B, to authorize the Northwest Center Township zoning resolution, published with all text amendments, December 20. 2021 material and files. And the amendments were passed. Comments made on the record, which constituted by virtue of a disk printed by uh, Helen. Given to me during my request by May 25, 2021. The disk itself is dated May 27, 2021, Board of Trustees, meeting one and two. The date is incorrect. It's not the correct date. However, Helen, the administrator, did in fact correct that, pushing on the envelope. Statement that the proper date on the special meeting is May 17, 2021, meeting recording to get to the issue that I made raised. Duty in her determination that meeting made comment the minutes of the special meeting on May 17. 10-5-3 as to that particular resolution that was passed. Her comments relative to my address to the trustees are capsulized in what is called virtual meeting remnants and is not contained within the minutes itself. At her discretion, apparently, she simply put in there, quote, number three, minutes of May 17, 2020, special meeting. Mr. Lepre expressed concern regarding resolution number 21 slash 05 17 b he felt that the previous adoption of the Schedule B was not done in compliance with the law in neither content nor procedure. That was her summation of which was not complete as is shown on the record itself by virtue of the tape. I'm simply calling this to the attention trustees because formed today by comments that she is not sure whether or not the express webex has any demanding requirement for safekeeping and if so for how long. So what has happened is Duty and her discretion chose to summarize the comments made by me on the record and so proven specifically um, and supported by the tape as how Greece made my statements on the record. The problem, gentlemen, is real simple. What happens if this is all that lasts in the minutes with nothing further. And what happens to the record that's on the quote unquote express? Tell them as the administrator and Mr. Andy LaGuardia had and a bond and an obligation for the keeping of records under certain circumstances. Apparently, some assistance given to them by what 
So I'm going to just throw in the local records commission meeting, which is signed, signed by uh, Mr. Mazzola at a work session. Such I guess I apologize. March 4, 2019. What I'm saying in conclusion is presentation the one sentence opinion with respect to my remarks regarding the record. If somebody chooses to throw this out, the only thing that's left is the disc for May 17, 2021's a special meeting. So in the event that she the laws will be in the event that she concerned by a citizen, the event The zoning inspector in the event this board or in the event any person who has property in this community needs to review what was stated on the record, it won't be there, but it'll be fine. Because there's apparently is nothing that precludes this this disc. And the content of what I think for too many of you can help, the WebEx, which is what stays on the computer. There's a contract apparently Mm -hmm. And perhaps uh, Ms. Humphreys will follow through with what she says she was going to do today and Go ahead. check the uh, record relative to what she needed me, which was a. Uh, Mr. Mr. <coughs> Mr. Lepre, I'm going to inter inter interrupt you a second. She's saying the recording cut out while you were talking. That's what she's saying right now. This was now or this is before? Just right now. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> what it means is if you're not hitting this phone here, then on the meeting, because we're in a verbal meeting, she's recording a meeting. Judy's, what are you, you're taking notes on the meeting or? Plus you have a recording. Can, can I make two suggestions? Sure. Number one, we don't have the recording anymore for that silver thing. Should we not be using that now? We should start using we it. Right. Start using it. That the report, mm -hmm. the recording thing, that little device we usually have. That we would usually have that. We haven't been using it since we've been doing the webex. Right. What does that mean? What I'm saying, I'm just telling you so you understand. I said I'm recommending that we use that again. That's because he's sitting here. And we're gonna we're gonna change our procedure to go back to the tape recorder, also on top of the WebEx. Okay. You want me to do this all over again? No, no. We Judy took notes on it. No, but what I but my other recommendation. My recommendation for Mr. Leffery would be to right now summarize in a somewhat timely manner. What you would like Judy to put in the notes this time, so it's as you like, because based on what she put last time, you weren't necessarily comfortable with what was there. So if you could tell her what you like, then it could be exactly how you like it. If that makes sense. Mr. Lagomario, sure. I appreciate your courtesy and your kindness and your trust. I'm not here to 
No, no. Nobody said you are. We're trying to help you out. It doesn't have to be. Sure. The problem is, if for whatever reason, what's on the record is destroyed by virtue of either by contract or by what she may have, there's no record. And the future will not be treated with any credibility. And you as trustees will not in the future be able to have the ability to trust whether this is happening because you're relying on what Judy's comfortable with is in making a once a one compass a statement, which in this case that's what she did. She thought it was about the thing she did. The problem is we don't know what's gonna happen on these matters with, with respect to the future. And the challenge is, and that's why the record is of extreme importance in this case, as I'm sure you understand. I'm sorry, I didn't get what I wanted to say to the man, Mr. Chairman, look at what she's talking to me. Yeah, but Judy also has an answer for, <laughs> right, yeah. correct. You want to put your microphone? Yeah, the answer is verbatim. Did the trustee have the authority to sell the record? We also back up to the cloud, too. On this too, so we have yeah. we have multiple backups on that disk and the program. We also back up to the cloud too. So if that disk gets destroyed, we have cloud backup. You have cloud backup with cloud 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 over the internet. Cloud. Internet cloud and also to our server. Right. Thank you. Service is the uh, website WebEx. No. Okay. The, what I'm trying to tell you is the program has no fundamental guarantee of availability in the future if the contract with WebEx is canceled or whatever might go against how long is WebEx's records kept? <laughs> we, okay. we, we, I mean, right there it is, right there. Right, she's telling me she's telling me for the first time. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Let me, what happens is it's, it's, it's backed up to the cloud, it's an electronic storage in the cloud, and we have our own internal server that is backed up to our server. So we have three backups on that system to cover ourselves. Our can you have malfunctions? Absolutely. That's why we have the paper documents. It doesn't have to be verbatim. It's got to be a, 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 you know, a concise representation. representation of the minutes. So that's what we're doing. So we have those multiple backups. Mr. McBride's suggestion is perfectly consistent with the suggestion. It's perfectly satisfactory to me. What I'm simply asking is we have a disk. We have the capacity of the disk being printed out. Right. Made part of the record. So all you got to do is do it. And then you'll have the record. We do. We have it all. You don't have it here. And yes, we do. Do what you want. But don't say a year from now or two years from now where there could be a lawsuit, where there could be a. a, a an order of piece of property mm -hmm. that wants to challenge it. Okay. Okay. But I'm telling you is you have the option, and I think you have the obligation to preserve the record in the manner in which is the best, and that is today to simply order it to be placed into the record as has already been done. Mm -hmm. This is done. She did it. So that's all you got to do is add it to. Judy's comment, and you've got to protect it. So, our suggestion is covered up in this chat. It's very bad. It's whatever you want. So, what you have to do is see the attachment or whatever you want, however you want to do it. That's all I have to say. Okay. Don't step on your glasses. Be careful. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Did you, do you understand? <laughs> Sorry. This no, we're, we're moving forward. We're going to. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Because you're requesting this. Right. 
That's good. More public comments? Mr. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Lepre, could we ask you to take your conversation over? We also open up to other public comments. You had your five minutes. We had to open up to others. We got to give everybody an opportunity real quick. Yeah, you've been, been on for quite a bit. Thank you. What do you have? And you can discuss it. You can ask any question. I, I think that, I think it's okay. It's okay. Well, those, those are well, things. We talked about it earlier. So. Well, we did talk about it earlier. So, yeah, the Highland Road is going to close. We have no jurisdiction over it. It's Summit County that doesn't. We have any plans? Or we just follow through this? Well, they'll put up deep. No, I didn't. I said they're talking about paving Twinsburg Road, too. We don't know what time, time period. Yeah, we hope so, too. They're putting a traffic light up at Twinsburg Road. Twinsburg and Old Age are putting a traffic light up. Try traffic light up this month on Twinsburg and Old Age Road. They're going to close Highland Road. And somebody said they were going to pave, pave Twinsburg Road, but I don't know how soon that's going to happen. Paving of Twinsburg Road. Okay, in the next year, traffic is supposed to be this month. And then next year, there'll be widening Old Age Road. And they're supposed to review the plans with us sometime in this month. Okay. I still do not like a $2 million bill in the morning. Tell me again why you didn't put it here. Tell me again why you did not put it here because that's what we bought the property for. Yeah. Like Malt, 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 uh, you want to answer that one? You're on the committee. <laughs> why we didn't do what? Why we did not put the building here? The fire station. Put it there we didn't do it. So why did you do that? No. <laughs> You're right. You're right. We did buy the property here as a contingency that if we needed to use this access, and I'm pointing toward the Brandy Light Road, to get out, if we couldn't get out on 82. Okay, the reason that we didn't pursue that option or put the fire station, you saying connected to the, to the town hall? Yeah. The reason we didn't pursue that is because in the end, um, I'll speak for myself, putting a, a building, a township building in Sagmar's property, I didn't feel that is Sagmar's property. It's ours. It's ours, we own it, but it's in Sagmar Hills. Change it. It's not change it. It's still in Sagamore. Right. Correct. It's still in Sagamore. Yes. That is correct. So I do not know that that's some way you would charge it to us. The other reason that we felt we should move it toward to the property that we already own is because. I just can't see a $3 million building. Well, it's, it's three, $3 million. Somebody told me, Mara, that's what they want to do, so we're worried about it. So I shouldn't well, be worried about it. It's actually, if you look at how I look at it, is I look at it as an investment in the community. It's a very long term investment. It gives us an operational efficiency where we're going to be all on one piece of property. Nothing's happening to the current at all, but we're going to operate out of one parcel. We're also going to have the, the, the fire station in a more centrally located um, area that'll that'll help with response times for folks at Spencer Road and Rolling Brook, things like that. And we just felt that in the end, it was the best path forward because the building on 82, we know we're going to lose about a bunch of frontage when they, when they do widen it. And um, we have property that we, you know, the way I sort of, I phrase it sometimes is you have a piece of property where we're at with our fire station now, we're looking to move to a new property. We're using basically the equity that we have in the current property that we're going to sell to help pay down that, that property. So. You know, we have the properties listed, right? They're, are they currently listed? They're in the process of being listed, yes. Right, is that for, so we have two properties currently listed, the property that's to the west of the, the fire station, and then front. Yeah. And so we, we really hope. The property, we'll sell that two property, right? Yes. Yeah. And we also have the property east of the two that was listed for 300000 So the reality is we think that you know, although it's kind of cost three million dollars, we really hope maybe you know I'm not going to speculate, but I'd say a good third of it will be paid for the property that we already own. You know. So now it's not three million; it's two million. Or... Well, we we well, we're, we're working through that. So mm -hmm. to, you're talking about where the the new fire station will be. We're already working with the county to get a preemptive system hooked up on East Highland and Old Age, 
We're also working with the county and widening that, that, that road and maybe potentially putting in some type of traffic signal on west time of the old age. So we've already sort of worked through that. And we're widening the drive uh, so, the, so the emergency vehicles can make their turns in and out. Uh, so we definitely have talked through that with uh, Chief Ripley and uh, Lieutenant Davis. I will say that's a beautiful piece for the training of the and Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, one more thing, and then we'll be allowed to let you know. But what about the sidewalk over here? They told me before why that water closed. You're talking on the. Yeah. On 82? Yes. No, we have people where Frank right. Gainer and I and, and, the, and the board. Right. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're working on that right now. As a matter of fact, I hope Frank's still on. But we've, we've already been in contact with the state. And Frank, are you on still? Yes. Yes. Frank, are you on? There we go. I'm here. Do you have any updates on the, the water that sort of sits on the uh, sidewalks over there? On the, talked about it. On the side part. What, what it is is... Uh, just to clarify, in a hole, when they went and did some work over there, they did a bunch of catch basin repairs, I don't know, two, three years ago over there when they did some paving. They overlooked two catch basins. Those happened to be right in the zone where that sidewalk issue is. So that being said, from talking, I'm trying to remember who it was I talked to. I have notes on it. Uh, the Summit County engineer guy I spoke with stated that this year they were going to address and fix that problem with those two catch basins, including that sidewalk. And they fixed the one catch basin already. The one a little bit east of there or north of there, excuse me. Uh, that would, uh, that's the county. I'm talking about uh, ODOT, ODOT on that Route 82. Gotcha. Yeah, so the state's looking to do that there. Okay. Any other questions? One second. We'll give you an opportunity. Anybody on the phone or on the meeting that has any questions? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Leffrey. We'll make it quick, though. Thank you. Mr. Mazzola, this is, uh, this is something you probably don't recall, but this, in essence, as a member uh, on this committee, essentially sets forth the request from the state of Ohio that, for example, resolutions remain permanent, period, no detention, period, cutoff. This, on the other hand, says, which governs your expresso or whatever the heck it's called, says recordings deleted by the end users are soft del deletes. Even if deleted by an, an end user, it exists in the system and is accessible by the compliance officer. It is permanently removed only after the retention period. The retention period isn't in the contract. She, meaning uh, Helen, says they told her on the phone that it's three years. So if I understand what she's saying and assuming you're willing to accept that oral statement, rather having it contained in the contract that you signed, then God bless you. On the other hand, I'm offering you this answer, which in essence is primarily what he has suggested. I will ask you to make a photocopy of Helen's disc given to me, which contains the content and her writing that contains the reference to the date. That's all I want you to do is accept it, put it in a record, and you've got it. If it come, if the issue comes up, whether it comes up next week or five years from now, you've got it. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. That's my suggestion. No problem. We appreciate it. I'm well, offering it to you at this time. I am not giving you a copy of it. I simply want you to have the ability to make copy of what Helen gave to me at the conclusion. I want this back at the end of the evening. Got it. Thank you. Not a problem. Motions and resolutions. Consent agenda. All matters under the consent agenda area considered by the board of trustees to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. Any trustee may remove an item from the consent agenda by request. No second is required for removal of an item. Items removed for separate discussion will be considered after the motion to move the consent agenda. Organization items that share request a motion 
to approve dispense with the reading of all the minutes of the trustees. Regular meeting May 3rd, 2021, trustee special meeting May 17th, 2021, trustee special meeting of May 27th, 2021. Item number two, the chair requests a motion to authorize the fiscal officer to draw current warrants vouchers totaling $169,742.39 to meet current expenditures. Item number three, the chair requests a motion to acknowledge receipt of the bank reconciliation for the month of May 2021, received June 7th, 2021. Chair request a motion to approve the, the, all the items on the consent agenda. So moved. With movement, I'll second. Discussion? See no discussion. Roll call, please. Paul Busher, absent. Russ Mazzola? Yes. Rich Ravel? Yes. Chair request resolution 21 06 07A to adopt a 2022 alternative tax budget in the amount of Seven million five hundred fifty-five thousand five hundred fourteen dollars and ninety-four cents. So move. We got a movement. I'll second. Discussion. See no discussion. Roll call. Paul Busher absent. Russ Mazzola yes. Rich Ravel yes. <clears throat> Chair request resolution twenty-one slash oh six dash oh seven B. To establish a township public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of service payments in lieu of ad valorem property taxes from Villa Franca Realty LLC DBA Dunkin Donuts and approving a school compensation agreement with the Nardonia Hills City School District. So moved. We have movement, we have a second, I'll second it. Discussion? No. I mean, it's we've been working on this for a while and it's, it has no impact on the schools at all, so. Which is, you know, when they, they were accepted. Okay, yeah. roll call. Paul Busher absent. Russ Mazzola? Yes. Rich Ravel? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Chair requests resolution 21 slash 06 07 C to establish a township public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of service payments in lieu of ad valorem. Property taxes from Jiffy Lube International Incorporated in approving <clears throat> a school compensation agreement with Nardonia Hills City School District. Do we have a movement? So moved. Have a movement. We have a second. I'll second. Discussion. Same as the other one. Roll call, please. Paul Bush or absent. Russ Mazzola? Yes. Rich Ravel? Yes. Chair request resolution 21 slash 06 dash 07 D. To a resolution to accept a letter of engagement with Dave Smith, Esquire, with Myers, Roman, Friedberg, and Lewis at the rate of, was it 175 an hour? 175. Correct. Per hour for a representation related to legal matters. Do we have a movement? So moved. We have a second. A second. We have a movement and a second. Discussion? Our attorney is moving to a, a different location. Um, roll call, please. Paul Busher absent. Russ Mazzola? Yes. Rich Ravel? Yes. Chair requests a resolution 21 slash 06 07 E to auction obsolete R01 equipment on gov.deals, govdeal.com. Excuse me. Do we have a motion? So moved. I'll second. We have movement and a second. Discussion? See no discussion. Uh, roll call, please. Paul Busher absent. Russ Mazzola? Yes. Rich Ravel? Yes. Fiscal officer reports and comments? Nothing today. Okay, trustees reports and comments. You have anything? Uh, just a quick update uh, from uh, Infinity uh, with the <clears throat> building. Um, we have a signed agreement. Uh, I think that went over today, and we will start to see meetings being set up probably on a bi-weekly basis uh, with their with their architects, engineers, and so forth, and uh, Northfield Center. So those will probably be set up uh, starting next week or the following week as we move into the planning stages. Okay. That was it. I do have one question. Sure. Um, 
what would we would we be possible would it be possible for us to maybe look at uh moving zoning giving their pays on a quarterly basis instead of doing 100 some checks per year would be probably fourth of that or a third of that since we're start since i'm starting to write the checks now it's it's going to be 12 checks per month or 12 every quarter or something if you guys think that's a better idea well then we do it quarterly before no it's always been monthly it's always been monthly what do you think and sure on <laughs> you're on one of the boards do you think anybody would care I, I think you'd have to interview each person yeah it doesn't matter to me if, if we end up keeping it the same i'll do it the same it's just no, I can't even go to McDonald's for the same. well aware of that <laughs> Maybe I could have uh, Judy or myself draft up a letter all the zoning people and ask their thoughts. If somebody's against it, I don't mind. We'll, we can Judy, do it all. Judy, we've got a full board on Thursday, right? Um, Other than one. Were you using your alternate? Right. Mm -hmm. So, we, we can bring that up. Well, she can send an email out to everybody and ask them if it would be okay if we pay them quarterly or if we pay them monthly. I don't see a problem with that. But they all agree to it and we pay them quarterly. If not, then. I mean, for the most part, it's like one meeting a month. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it might make sense to them. But so you have to send them a check for every meeting. Now we before I can enter into the ADP in a second, but now I have to physically end. Not that it's it's another half hour hour, but it's just kind of silly. I'm sending twelve thirty dollar checks a month as opposed to you know ninety dollar checks every three months or four months. That does seem quite silly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, bring it up to them at the board meeting, see what they, because that's I, ultimately they're the ones getting the checks. So I don't want to, you know, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to ruffle any feathers, whatever. If they prefer one way, you know, if somebody's standing alone, I have no problem with that. Perfect. That's it. Perfect. That's all. Okay. Anything else? I mean, we have a lot going on other than that, the stuff we talked about, but there's a lot going on. So, um, the chair requests a motion to enter executive session to discuss employment personnel in the administrative office and the sale of township property. Do we have a movement? So moved. I'll second. Roll call, please. Paul Busher, absent. Russ Mazzola? Yes. Rich Ravel? Yes. Attendees in executive session will be the board. Uh, the fiscal officer, the administrator, and uh, Judy Flato. Okay. The executive session will start. Eight nineteen. What's that? It's eight nineteen. Eight nineteen. Eight nineteen. What's that?
Okay, go ahead. Chair requests a motion to leave executive session at 9 6 p.m. Do we have movement? So moved. Second, I'll second it. Discussion. See no discussion. Roll call. Paul Busher absent. Russ Mazzola. Yes. Rich Ravel. Yes. Um, Chair requests a motion for adjournment. So moved. Uh, second. Meeting ends at 9.07 p.m. Roll call, please. Paul Busher absent. Russ Mazzola. Yes. Rich Ravel. Yes. All right. Thank you very much for everybody attending. Thank you.